Welcome to Signal and System Lecture Series. Here in this session, I'll be going to explain distortionless transmission of signal. So, if your transmission of signal is distortionless, then what are the conditions which is there with its magnitude spectrum as well as phase spectrum? So, all those things that I'll be discussing in this session. So, let us try to understand first of all what is distortionless transmission. So, to understand that, first I will make one system here. So, I have one system and if I say this system is been given with input x of t. So, I am giving signal x of t over here. Then at output side, same signal that should get received. So, when you feed x of t sig signal to this system at output side it will get delayed by some time because of transmission of that signal through this system. So if I say this signal is received by delay of Td then you will be observing your output signal that is what x of t minus Td. And if attenuation or amplification is k, then I need to multiply k with your output. So ultimately, distortionless means what? Information are exactly same which we send it at input side. So at output side, if I say my signal is y of t, then y of t that should be k into x of t minus td. Where k is attenuation constant or amplification constant. So, in case of if amplitude is increasing, then one can say it is amplification. And if amplitude of signal is decreasing, in that case one can say it is attenuation constant. But information, that is there in terms of frequency domain. So, it will not get changed as if it is only just delayed by some time period. So, I am saying like my output y of t, that is k into x into t minus td. So, if this is happening in that case, one can say this is distortionless transmission. Now see, I will be deriving transfer function of this system so that one can understand what is the frequency response of this system. And based on frequency response, we can understand whether this given transmission is distortionless or not. So to explain that, first I will mention, see, if you have x of t and in frequency transform if it is x of omega and over here you have output y of t and if it is having frequency response y of omega then I will be relating input and output transform and based on that I can have transfer function of system. So see y of omega that is what? frequency transform of y of t. So we have y of t here. So let me mention here y of t that is k into x into t minus td. Now to have frequency transform here we can apply Laplace transform or Fourier transform to get output in terms of transform. So, if I apply Fourier transform here, we should know one basic property of Fourier transform based on uh, time shifting. So, time shifting property states if you have signal x of t and its Fourier transform if it is x of omega, then Fourier if signal input signal is shifted by t minus td, then Fourier transform of that signal that will be e to the power minus j omega into td into x of omega. So this is what the basic formula and property which is there with time shifting property in Fourier transform. So to have Fourier transform of this y of t if we apply this property then you will be getting your y of omega and that y of omega will be y of omega will be k is constant and Fourier transform of x of t minus td and as I have told you as per time shifting property 
we can say this y of omega that will get to k into e to the power minus j omega td into x of omega. Now see, first I will explain you response of this system. So what is response of this system? If I say response of the system is h of omega, then that is what transfer function of this system and that is output transform divided by input transform. So transfer function of system, transfer function of system that is h of omega and that is equals to output transform y of omega divided by input transform x of omega. So based on this relation of output and input transform we can say h of omega that is y of omega divided by x of omega and that will be k into e to the power minus j omega td. So now we have transfer function of system or one can say it is a transform of system. So here I'll explain you magnitude spectrum and phase spectrum of this transfer function of system. So if you calculate magnitude spectrum then magnitude spectrum that is k only. So magnitude spectrum or one can say amplitude spectrum so that is k here and phase spectrum so phase spectrum over here that is phi and that one can say it is minus omega td. So magnitude spectrum that is constant k and phase spectrum that is minus omega td. Now let us plot this first and then I will discuss how this is happening inside of the system. So if you plot magnitude spectrum then in magnitude spectrum on x axis there is frequency and on y axis there is magnitude or one can say amplitude. And here this magnitude spectrum that is constant k so for all frequency it is actually constant line k and if you plot frequency phase spectrum then in phase spectrum here on y axis there is phase and on x axis there is frequency so if you observe phase with respect to frequency graph so that is minus td so minus td means it is negative line slope it is negative slope line which is passing through origin so here if i say origin is over here then negative slope line that is this so it is straight line so you can see phase divided by omega that is minus td and minus td is what actually it is a constant time delay right so one can say slope is minus td negative slope is happening like this so this is what about phase spectrum which is happening here now if your transmission is happening distortionless in that case it should happen in this way but practically 100% distortionless transmission is not possible. So whenever you have practical transmission of signal at that time signal will not get received as per this spectrum as one can see here magnitude spectrum and phase spectrum. So practically you will be observing it is happening like this. So as it is happening like this one can say distortion is getting initiated after some higher frequency component. So this is what about magnitude spectrum practically and if you observe this is what practical magnitude spectrum 
and this is ideal magnetic spectrum and here one can see this is ideal phase spectrum but when you see your practical phase spectrum then it will be somewhat distorted it will not be straight line like this it will be somewhat like this so this deviation that indicates distortion so this is practical phase spectrum and this is ideal spectra spectrum so whatever deviation which is happening in this phase spectrum that indicates somewhat distortion is there in received signal so in distortion this transmission your phase spectrum that should be straight line with negative slope and amplitude spectrum should be having constant line but ideally you will be observing in laboratory you will be finding response is not straight line it will be having somewhat distortion and shape will look like somewhat this so i hope that you have understood this session thank you so much for watching this video you can give your valuable suggestions definitely based on it in future i'll make videos which will ensure to solve all those queries which has to be solved on my channel which will be helping students to learn it in easier way thank you so much for watching this video